in the order of 4 p.m. Silence your phone. Can we stand for clarification? Right behind you guys. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. I have a motion to adopt the agenda. I'll second. Motion made and second for the biggest. Aye. Okay, we'll move on down to old business. Ordinance number 874, notice for planning withdrawal of annex property from the Lakeview Rural Fire Protection District. Uh, Dave? Yes. You guys want to start? I've got the ordinance here. So, go ahead. <laughs> so, go ahead. <laughs> <laughs> so, Craig Foster is the chairperson for the Lakeview Rural Fire Protection District. Mm -hmm. And he's going to explain what that is and what we do. I, we have a, a fairly new board of town council members, and we would like to express to you our relationship for the town of Lakeview and the town of Lakeview Fire Department. And, uh, and I'd like to hand these out. And, uh, so we just got some, some little bit of business to talk about, and Sir Craig is going to just enlighten you on everything sure. you ever want to know. I'm not sure how many of the new council members are familiar with the rural fire protection district. Lakeview Grove runs from uh, south, about halfway to New Pine Creek, just south of Sam Stewart's house, north to the top of Bisk Hill, uh, west of town, out to not quite to New Idaho Road, and then uh, east up to Resort Town. Okay, um, we're a taxing district, we're a fire protection district, we're a taxing district. Um, and in the early 70s, Lakeview Rural and the town of Lakeview signed a fire protection agreement that basically shares resources between um, the town of Lakeview and Lakeview Rural. Uh, in that agreement, 70% of our tax proceeds go to the, to the town to provide a shared position for a fire chief, a volunteer fire department. We have a bunch of equipment that's housed here. Some of it's housed at the new fire station up on Bower Street, um, which we, we built five years ago, four or five years ago. Um, but we basically share a fire department and we share a, a volunteer uh, fire department, okay? And, and to do that, 70% of our tax funds go to the town. We, we retain 30% to do what we build a new fire station north and south. We, we, we've got plans to build another one south of town when we've got the money together. Um, so that the people in the district drop from insurance level eight down to insurance level four, which is a big deal on your fire insurance. Um, that's a lot of money for annual insurance if you're down at the four range. So um, anyway, what this packet we handed you was was it shows you the the money that's either going to the town or has gone to the town the last couple of years. Part of this fire protection agreement, um, it's been updated several times since the 70s, but the most recent update, other than some house cleaning in 2020, was in 2013. Um, the fire protection district and the town got sideways with each other on annexation. And to not go through the, all of that. Um, we developed on page, the second to the last page, there's a, a, plot, a section in here about annexation. It would be the last page in the handout. Yeah, it's actually, the, yeah, the last page in the handout, that's right. So the annexation language basically says that when the town annexes property for five years after the annexation is approved, the 
money that would have come to the fire protection district we keep for five years. We reduce our payment to the town by the by 30% of that amount, the 70% still goes um, for five years and then it, it rolls out. Okay. Um, that language is without getting too deep into the weeds, unless you really want to, is a negotiated truth from previous boards and previous town managers. Okay. Uh, it's working out well now with the annexation of of uh, Pacific Pine and the property to the north. You can see when when Red Rock was annexed, um, if you go back to page one, there are Red Rock and some other little properties that we reduced the payment $2,600. And we'll do that for three more years for Red Rock, actually. Um, and then we'll add in the the, uh, the the north property it gets annexed and and then after five years we'll go back to the full seventy percent of that district. Okay. What we're going to do with that money is we're going to continue to use that to get either you know build a new fire station, upgrade or build new equipment. Dennis and the guys need something you know that specific. Our protection district. Those are our operating costs. Okay, and so that's what that's what we're doing with the money. Okay, so that's a little bit about the Lakewood rural um, and how the annexation process works through the language that's in the fire protection district. We can answer any questions you have. Okay. Help explain some of this. <clears throat> it might be our goal. We may eventually just work ourselves out of the district, and it all, might all become townable. But at the time, at, at, at the time we we're living in, there was a void, and these people were not getting a, a good insurance break on it, and that's why this district came into play. And then, so when the town keeps growing, like Red Rock, and then the Man Camp area, and then the West, and now we're looking at this area. Well, yeah. 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 So our district refund, our district source assessed values keep shrinking and dwindling and yours keeps growing and, and we don't have a problem with that. It's just this is how we balance the scale and, and try to do that. And you know, maybe someday down the road this they'll get re, re, refigured or we may just, you know, our tax levy may roll into something else. But for right now we're trying to be good stewards of the money and work with it. And basically we're just an equipment holder and you guys have the manpower. And, and so um, your your fire department fights all of our fires. We, we don't have a boy on the, on the table. How many volunteers do you guys have? Zero. How many volunteers do you have? 20. They don't. It's all under you guys, not yeah. under specifically this. No, you know, they're all there. They and we, we were. For the town, who they contract with the town, and we cover with our personnel. Yeah. Um, we do mostly minor maintenance and stuff on all of their rigs and stuff like that. If so there's anything major, then it comes out of. I believe it still comes out, right, right guys? Yeah. Um, but basically, we're on loan to them or on hire to a rural fire department. That's some of your own equipment. Yeah. Okay. Some of the equipment that's out, either out here in the shop or, or up north, is like your rural equipment. Is there anything? Uh, um, that's we, we've here? got one city engine up yeah. north. Okay. So it's a, it's all a real combined thing. Um, and you know, we pay our part. We, the agreement is seventy percent of our tax revenues every year go go to the town to fund our part of of the whole program. Um, yeah, we've got, I don't know, 10, 12, I don't have the equipment list, but we had 10 or 12 pieces of equipment. Yeah, so, and, 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 you know, if, if Dennis, you know, if we have a major big pump go out on the fire, on our fire engine, then we pay for it. Mm -hmm. Okay, uh, that's just maintenance, that doesn't come out of the 70%. We've had a good relationship with Dennis, and he's been a great partner to work with, and the fire department has had no problems at all. We had a good fire last year at the Forest Service Ranger District down across from Hunter, and that's in our district. And and Dennis responded to it, and they had mutual aid from Thomas Creek 
west side, we came out and dealt with them also and worked together. We have some extra tender, we have an extra pumper truck, and that enhances his your fleet of the fire. So our equipment will roll on town fire. If whatever dentist prescribes, that's what they'll get and they'll do. And we are, we all kind of it, 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 it helps build a better group all together. We stand together better. I think it's a win win. Yeah. Yeah, I was just gonna say that. Well, you know, it helps having those other engines. See, we've got four engines now. We've got three engines that sit here in the bay. One belongs to the volunteers, it's volunteer owned. One belongs to the rural fire department, and one belongs to the city. And then we've got another city backup engine out at the North Station. To have that station be viable, it has to have an engine that's got all the necessary equipment on it to be. To even call it a fire station. And by if it has all that, then anybody within five miles of that station, it doesn't matter whether they're in our district, Thomas Brick West Sides, or whatever, but their insurance rates will go down significantly within five miles of that. And so, something we, we're working on now is to build a new well out at the North Fire Station. Uh, they've come out quite the way we wanted. Theoretically, the well girl is going to be here last Wednesday. Okay, <laughs> he's a well girl. <laughs> <laughs> When he gets here, hopefully we'll get that figured out. So we've got 250 gallons a minute, which will fill a tender pretty fast. Our goal is yeah. to have a well to we'll fill a 4,000 gallon tender in 15 minutes. That's a huge problem. And so that's the turnaround for, you know, and we've got mutual aid agreements with everybody. You've got mutual aid agreements with everybody. And so, you know, a big fire, everybody shows up. Mm -hmm. and, and so hopefully we'll get. Uh, well fixed for a very much longer. We have 60k in the hole. Quite early. Yeah. And that that well out there, I mean, it's going to benefit the BLM. But let me know oh, when, when we finally get it working. That that blue cap on top. Uh -huh. Paint that hole. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah. So anyway. That's a real fire protection district and the relationship with the town and how annexation works. Annexation used to be a very strenuous, a very confrontational thing. And it's not it. The fact that they would sit there and say, you know, you've got to annex this and make perfect sense, we're all right with it, is because of this language. Yeah. And, and my, my job dovetails well into what I'm doing here calculating that it's easy for me I know what it is it's easy for me to calculate it's easy to pull it out so it's, it's a slam dunk for me and on this handout the first page is what we agreed and I we presented Michelle with a check in this top copy here and you see on the bottom it says update on 6 1 2021 that's that's what we'll fill in when we because of the top it's sort of our estimated collection of revenue is 82,700 we don't collect 100 percent we collect around 99.6 percent on a timely manner, and so we'll pay what we collect on for by June 30th, and, and uh, at that time when we get ready to pay, we'll pay that, and then also I'll calculate that little bit of difference in the annexation for the, we only got like five properties going in on the north end up there, so I'll get that calculated, but if that, that's, a, that's a mechanical thing that I work out with Michelle, and I'm very transparent with her on that. So we got a good relationship going that way. Anyway, it was my desire to introduce you guys to us and, and better explain our relationship on how these two fire departments work and how the money flows and, and kind of put it in perspective. So when somebody talks about making fire protection and, and our equipment and your money and vice versa, that's what it's kind of like. Anybody have any questions? Well, we really can't vote on this until the next meeting. No, we're, we're, we're done until we get to June, for our, for our perspective. This is we need numbers. Yeah. You know what we're doing in here? Yeah. Yeah. Good job.
Thank you. Well, thank you guys for making it all work out. I live in a taxing district, and so does Foz, and the savings of our insurance more than offsets the increase. <laughs> it's a win-win for everybody. I know when the fire district first started, Jerry Berry was on the fire board. And he said by the time they got it all said and done, he put two hundred dollars back in his pocket. No, it's a, it's, it's a more money. than that. Than yeah, it's more than that. Today. <laughs> but back then, they were a ten dropped to an eight. So, oh, yeah. right. When you guys dropped to a four, what did it go down to? Fun? Or how much did you save? Because I haven't really. Yeah, I don't. I don't. I don't do the family finances. <laughs> I can tell you what I say. And because we noticed quite a bit, but ours was about 70 bucks for the year. So, because yeah. we're on, we actually have Thomas Creek and Lakeview. We get yeah. both over town and town. Our homeowners, I mean, I'd rather pay 500 bucks a year, which to me is a steal. I've been paying that for 25 years for a single house. So. Well, we got one house that's up on Old Smoky Road. Uh, <laughs> 10 years ago, I tried to get them to join the fire district because we got. People to the north are in the fire district, people to the south, and they're a little island. One of the nicer houses out there. They chose not to do that. They would rather spend their money to their insurance and have their insurance pay up to $10,000 for us to fight their fire. But we can't guarantee that we're going to go out there to the fire because if something else happens in town, then our district's liable for that, or the town's liable for it. I keep thinking once we got down to a four that she would opt to join the district, but she still chose not to. But it's, it's a big price difference. It's a big difference. We were looking at property out of town, and, and the homeowners alone was one of their property taxes alone. There's two thousand dollars a year for homeowners, and property taxes were only eight hundred compared to my twenty eight hundred. But I mean, it kind of offset each other. But even at two thousand dollars, and that was yeah. nothing to go out. Yeah. To be compared, we're not, we're at the highest level, we're at level 10 in Summer Lake, Lake we just built the Summer Lake, it's half the size of the house in Lake and, and uh, the insurance rate's exactly the same, okay, it's, it's 1100 bucks a year for homeowner's insurance on half the, on half the square foot. Mm -hmm. So, for taxes, if you live inside the city limits in seven hundred one, you're going to pay close to nineteen dollars per thousand assessed value in taxes. If you live in the Lakeview Rural Fire Protection District, you're going to pay about fourteen dollars per thousand in taxes because you don't have some of the city services. Mm -hmm. If you live outside of our district, farther north of Valley Falls, let's say, you're going to pay twelve dollars per thousand. So that's you see how the tax of assessed value. And that's kind of how that works out. <laughs> you know, when we went to the L C P meeting, mm -hmm. uh, you said the taxes were around 14, 13 to 14 million. That's 13 the, million is our total gross revenue okay. from all assessment countywide. Right. And so out of that, we get 775,000. That one sheet you gave us. Okay. I just. But the majority of the residents live out of town limits. And we have what eighty five hundred residents roughly in that But the rest that. the rest of the, the money goes to the county roads and all that stuff. All that. Well we could split hairs a long ways on this thing. So um well I don't want to take up a whole meeting time. Yeah. Just um, for that but it could be a conversation I I'm just curious. The town of Lakeview and I don't have this here so I pulled it out and gave it to a guy and I forgot where he played. <laughs> For the year before last, in 2020, the revenue for the town of Lakeview at 100% collection was $776,000. Okay, and that went well for 2021. Because the assessed values went up because the housing market was going nuts. <laughs> so, okay. Is, that a, is it a percentage all the time we get? I'm sure what? Is it a percentage all the time we get? So, I mean, how do you figure that out? Do we just all... ask for more money? Is that what we do? I mean, no. <laughs> so, you, You've heard of bonds and rates. Right. A bond is a fixed number that pays off in a specific amount of time. So if I wanted to build a fire hall, I would go get a bond to build a fire hall. So if I needed 500000 to make the building, I'd get a bond for 20 years and I'd do that. 
if I want to operate that fire station and, and pay for my staff, I get an operating levy. Levies go on forever, okay, until they're voted out. A bond goes until that bond payment is paid out, just like our hospital has a bond to, for the remodel and that'll pay out. And then and you have these operating levies. So people get bonds and levies kind of mixed up. So the town has a levy, and it's been a fixed rate levy for a long time, and it, in order to increase that, you'd have to go for voter approval, which would be tough to fly these days. Right. And, and to be real specific, I can tell you what that rate is. Um, the town of Lakeview is getting 6.5437, uh, $6.54 per thousand is going towards the town of Lakeview. So then you say, well, Dave, how much is, is, is uh, the county getting here for our commissioner here? And the county is getting uh, $3.76 okay. So you say, well, that's a smaller number, but if you look at we're, the county is growing off countywide and your six bucks is on the town of Lakeview. So that's that's the difference. It's not one dime that goes to waste, so. Hmm? Not one dime that goes to waste, so. No. Yeah, okay. I was just, yeah, there's, did I say that? No. 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 Oh, okay. Yeah, so no road money is paid by property taxes. That's a big rub I have in my office. People come in, well, I paid my taxes, my road is crap. Well, <laughs> it doesn't come from there. Yeah. <laughs> Slow down. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Anyway. That's another fight for another story. We wanted, we wanted just to clear the air and, in, and educate you guys about our fire district and how the mechanics work. And, and my concern actually was, because I live the worst part of the annexation battle, it was the first term I was on, <laughs> I don't ever want to go back to that again. And I don't know if any of the new council members have heard any about those battles, but it's working. It's working good. Okay. We just we want to keep it working. We want to be very transparent and upfront. Okay. Way to move on down to Dave on mapping. Okay. So I I got thrown on the bus at work on a couple different things, so I didn't get to put up together a handout. So before I even start in on this. I'm getting the cart possibly before the horse, but I'm trying to generate a I'm trying to generate a, a, a scenario that I can take to the commissioners with some other folks from the county, Darwin Johnson and some others. So we want to try to encourage the commissioners to, to look into doing that, and that is a GIS cartographer position. Now we're a small county and we subcontract out all of our mapping. And we've had the state of Oregon do it, and they were terribly slow and had lots of errors. And then we had the <laughs> county do it. And they were a little quicker and had less errors and still had more stuff. And then when I took office, <clears throat> we switched to Deschutes County, and now we're getting about a three or four week turnaround with the state of Oregon. We were out, out about six months to a year. And with Lane County, we we're out about two or three months, and now we're out four to six weeks. So we're getting we're getting a better service, and we're having less errors. And so we're subcontracting with a, a GIS mapping person. And it would be nice to see somebody in county for a multiple reasons. One, we would create a position that would put up somebody to work in Lakeview, which would be good instead of sending our Lakeview money out of town. Two. It would open the door for more projects to be done on a local basis, and Darwin's going to touch on that in just a, just a moment um, about what this would benefit us. So, talking nuts and bolts, I have not prevented, presented this to James, nor uh, Mark, nor Barry. We're trying to get all of our facts together so that when we do come to the commissioners, we can say that we would like to do this and we would like to partner with the town of Lakeview. And in order to do that, our big tie would be with this Mr. Scott Utley and the 911. And I'm going to go into that in just a minute. So, as far as looking at resources, um, I've gone around and talked 
we're the county currently spending about twenty-seven thousand dollars annually in GIS mapping and cartography work that we're sending out of town. And the, the town of Lakeview through ES EMS on nine one one is spending, and if I correct, is thirty thousand dollars annually or seventy five hundred dollars a quarter with a geosol, which I think is based out of Albany. It's Geocom, it's now a multi, it's like Airbus, it's a big, big company. Yeah, it's been a shady product. And, and their resource stream has been shrinking like crazy. It used to get close to $60,000 a year, and now it's down to 30, and that number's changing. And, and Scott can describe that scenario to you more, but currently that's what that's what you guys are spending every every year is 30K to them. So if you took your 30 and our 27, we're getting close, and kind of tied it in with some other things we might be able to get close to make a person to make it make sense for us. Um, we've had some different commissioner leadership. This is actually the third time I've tried to pitch this and um, we get close and then it doesn't make sense and it just kind of goes away. Again. Um, um, so I talked to, it would be a county employee and Scott has been very, very sensitive to the fact that not really wanting to marry with the county from some previous bad blood and some things like that and are trying to create a scenario that would make sense for all the players involved and if they, if they brought to the table their contract for thirty thousand dollars that they would have ownership in that as far as a priority so when the address kings come in it that would you know it's not that they're a second class citizen and they're going to the town and they can't wait till the county work gets done it so it would make sense for everybody to make it all pull together. Anyway, I talked to Jane Collins and to create a position and to fund it with all the overhead of payroll taxes and the PERS and the health insurance and workman's comp and workman benefit and the, all the perks that go with it, it's about a $94,000 a year position. And so that's the nut we're trying to cover with our resources that we have. So obviously, if you do the quick math, your 30 and our 27 doesn't make 94. But there's some other opportunities maybe coming forward in the county that may make it make sense, and I'm trying to do that. We have, um, I won't go into a lot of detail, but uh, that looks like it's coming forward. I've also ran down some of the costs of what it's going to take to mechanically make it work. We have an aging plotter. Uh, it's black and white, and, <clears throat> and we bought it in 2010. And uh, it's it's functioning, but it's not as ha it's not as happy as it should be. A new plotter. Uh, I I we just got a quote from uh, Canon for 17k. I think we can get that closer to 11k. Um, I talked to our IT guy about a PC because it takes a very powerful PC and twin screens because we're doing Esri mapping. There's a lot of it's it, you're moving got a lot of parts moving in that. The cost of that is just a little south of two grand with uh, double screens and, the, and all that equipment to make a workstation work for that person there. And so we have those upfront costs we have to be, be looking at also. Um, anyway, I'm going to turn this to Darwin because he's going to talk to you about, uh, he's very, very closely related to a photographer out of Harvey County that's been doing a lot of contract work for our county in the past, and he's very familiar with it. I'm not a cartography king. If there's anybody in the office building that's more up on cartography as him, I spend more stuff, but mine's really basic lot line adjustments, partitions, and that kind of stuff. So, well, Council, it's good to be with you. Um, thanks for letting us take the time to talk about the GIS. As a council, I talked about it a couple of times and just kind of spun the wheels a little bit. But um, you know, the, the 911 contract with Geocom now is, is really one of the key components to making this thing work. Um, you know, what, what the town gets from that now is really just the minimum required from that company, um, which is just straight reimbursement for the work they do to make sure addresses, roads, and stuff like that gets put into the state system and, then, and that, you know, able to be read by dispatch and all that. Information. So, there's not a whole lot for, as for projects that that you know, that 30 is covering. It. It's not covering anything right now. So, you know, if, if we were to build this position, you'd say, hey, well, what are we going to get out of it? That that 30 is, you know, 
you're not really getting a whole lot out of it anyway. You know, it's, it's coming in and going out. So, what did we figure out the daily or the, the hourly rate? The daily? 316. What's that? So, at the last quarter, his bill, they did um, their hourly rate from what they paid at $7,500 worked out to $316 an hour is what GeoCom charged the town like these creatures. Yeah, that's worked out. And, and, and we're using them as well, right? I mean, so GeoCom's covering all of the 911. Um, addressing changes that happen. So I send them, as address manager for the county as well, I'm sending them any new address that we add to the system. So there's, you know, that's that's something that, that uh, you know, we're outsourcing as you know, what they explain, you know, when we're getting mapping changes and stuff done. But, but what we're really, you know, trying to, to have, you know, this position for is also the other projects that are, that are important. Um, you know, having, you know, Really up to date information in the, the office available to all department heads and you know staff that works on let's say water systems and you know you know boundaries for these fire districts being able to see all this stuff you know in real time is is important uh, especially with you know technology today it's it's available it's just a matter of you know, the cost where is that at and um, right now I'll tell you that we entered into an agreement with Harney County to. Uh, put back online some of what Lane County was doing when we were with Lane County is a, the GIS online mapping that's available, um, and uh, you know you're able to search you know by owner name and, and account number, map and tax lot numbers, and then there's a number of layers that we we've, we've added on there. But um, all this stuff, you know, zoning's actually on there right now for the town. Um, it's something that uh, you know hasn't been done until just recently. You know, uh, the ten years I've been here. Zoning itself goes in there online. That's, that's now online, and, and it's helpful. I mean, it's snow load things like that. I mean, there's uh, all sorts of building options. Uh, so, you know, when you're when you talk about even fire districts and those maps and those boundaries, and you know, your eight uh, insurance agency are going to use stuff like that too, knowing oh how far are we from our fire hall or something. Uh, so it just you know when you when you're planning and, and in that like I am, I mean, it's it's important to have. And so uh, I'll, I'll tell you, you know, uh, if this were to become a county position, which we're hope, hopeful that it will at some point, uh, when we get all this, uh, we're outsourcing back in. So you, we'll just have to decide, you know, as uh, what costs do we want to share in this position, and, and then what you know projects do we think. You know, realistic getting done in, in, you know, within the you know, first year or, or moving forward. Um, you know, Harney County has contracts both with the City of Hines and the City of Burns, uh, and then also the Tribe, which helps offset that cost. They, they've gotten a, a really good rate um, from the county, in my opinion, over the years at, at roughly five thousand a pop, um, which you know, fifteen hundred isn't a whole lot. Um, but it, but it helps you know anytime they need some work done, just go ask the GIS coordinator to get that done for you. So the similar thing could be arranged here, where we'll you know house that position in the county, um, it, and then you would just you know if you need something, just come and ask for it, and it get put on the uh, you know priority list and get done as quickly as it needs to be done. So um, you know when you talk about you know, annexations and stuff like that, you know. Especially, you know, working with the assessor's office, you can kind of see, hey, what's the benefits to this you know, tax-wise? It's it's something really nice for noticing. Um, I know you know we've come across uh, incorrect noticing before, and, and that the problems that that creates, especially um, when when uh, you know, people find out about something that they should have found out about early on in the process and come in last minute. You know, we've had to have extra meetings and stuff because of that. So it just makes everything, um, you know. Done, done correctly, and uh, I don't need to speak more about it. Uh, but if you got any questions, I'll. Uh, yeah. yeah, Scott. Scott. Well, I can. You know, if we can make this work, and of course, you know, there's a uh, there's exit plans. You know, that you can exit out of the program. But I can see the town could benefit, especially the utility department, like their main shutoffs. In the summer, it's easy. But when there's two foot of snow, and you and you, you know, you get uh, GPS on every shut off for every house, and your mains, and so if you have a, a major uh, 
license. And each main blows up. They know exactly, they just get their GPS and say, uh, it's right here, instead of digging up the whole intersection trying to find the uh, uh, shutoff valve. And especially on residential in wintertime, you know, who knows where their meter is because the town doesn't read meters in the winter. And uh, I shovel mine out. I, I know where mine is at. <laughs> but a lot of people don't. And we already have all the fire hydrants GPS in town. That was a project we did several years ago. But, uh, what, what that would look like is that for about a $5,000, you can get a GPS handheld tool with a rolling map. And you can give it to your reader teachers, and every time they go to that property, they can pin it. They're standing right over it, they can pin it, and they put it on there. Then that information will be downloaded into your coordinator, and they could, our coordinator would be doing it, be your, your maintenance guy while he was there, and then they could pin those, and they could make a map of those. And what we're, this is all premature, and, 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 I, and I don't want to get the cart before the horse, because this is not a done deal by any means. Uh, yeah, but anyway, Let's say, for instance, Jeff wanted to get that done, and it's a whole new project. So I'm currently contracted with Deschutes County for $75 an hour. So if you wanted to build a new project like that, we would say, okay, we would work, we would, this person would work on it for $75 an hour, and we would build that. And then then later on, as little enhancements go along, it would be, you know, or something like that. Whatever that, that's going to be a relationship between the county and them, and we'll work together that when we get down. But again, what I'm asking for today is after I leave, you guys talk together with Scott and to see if, if it makes sense for you, if, if you say, yeah, we'll support this if, if the county goes forward so I can take that with me to the commissioners when Darwin and I and some others go before the board and, and, and present them with this and we'll say, yeah, the town Lakeview is willing to do this. And this hasn't, this is, hasn't been, I mean, in the very first time we tried to it, Scott was not warm to this suggestion at all for some previous other problems, and, and I understand that. But we worked a lot of things out and tried to get some things worked out, so I get it. Uh, but anyway, that's kind of why I got asked to be on the agenda, and I wanted to kind of talk that out a little bit. So I've been doing GIS for the beginning since 2001, mm -hmm. so I'm very... You're right in the Yeah. So as far as usefulness, it, it's huge. I yeah, really see for the town, especially you know, you could look at your water lines and utilities, and and attribute them with the year that they were put in, and we can start looking at, okay, when do we need to start rotating, you know, changing lines out, that kind of stuff, um, you know, the streets, all that different stuff. I mean, there's the possibilities are endless. That's so why I, I see that there's a lot. There's a lot like the microwave. When you have one, you don't. Have yeah. <laughs> and a lot of that knowledge on where those water lines are is going to go away. I mean, Jeff and some of his crew, you know, a lot of that stuff's just in their head. They know this line's over yeah, here. If we can map all that stuff and then we can formulate a game plan as far as this is the age, you start rotating, put new stuff in as they get to you know, sunset and out. I mean, there's there's a few things that we can Yeah, no 20 years, you're not going to have that knowledge base there to fall back on. Uh, people go away. So, you know, your water manifold system's got different sections that are newer and older sections, and you can identify those and get those identified, and then you know your target their work areas. That'll be a great tool for you. Yeah, and you can keep track of repairs, and then you realize, okay, this area needs a little bit more attention. I mean, there's a lot of it. Yeah. But it is a lot, of good, a lot of good use, and I think it would make sense for everybody in this deal, but, um, and, you know, it's so early in the deal, um, and, and we're still quite a ways away from making the net make a positive turn at the county level. Uh, but I, I think if we all work together, we can get closer to get there. Do you think you'd be able to resource that out instead of us contracting with the shoes? Could somebody contract with us to help fund that? Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm careful about opening the door to that because I don't want to overburden. I want if we get a group together that, that buys in on this and helps contribute to make this thing work, that's going to be our primary, our primary people. And then once we kind of get our feet on the ground, we just get some experience behind it. So it's just like I am the only county in the state that's using Deschutes counties. Three other counties, when I heard that I went on with Deschutes, reached out to them and tried to join on. And Deschutes said, no, we can't take any more on. And 
so on, and, and I get that kind of stuff. So anyway, it's just uh, I'm going to retire in three and a half years, and I'm trying to <laughs> maybe I'm trying to leave it better than I found it, and I'm trying to set up the next successor to be in a better position, and and um, and try to get some things worked out. This is one of my bucket list things is to try to get this resolved. I think it would be good for the county. I think it would be good for everybody. Plus, it brings another salary to me. What do you think the feasibility of actually finding a qualified engineer? So, and that's a very good <laughs> question. And so, as everybody knows, when you live in a remote area, and somebody comes to town with these qualifications, and they're here for a year, and then their wife realizes that Walmart's 100 miles away, and it snows, um, and then you educated somebody and brought them up to speed. By the time they get to pull their own weight, they pack up and go. We actually have had a, can a strong candidate who was born and raised here that moved away on the very first time we tried to go. That was going to be a great, strong candidate. And he got all dressed for the dance and he didn't play the music. And so he didn't come. He's a possibility. We also have another person who was born and raised here who is doing this exact same job in another area that has reached out and said they would like to relocate and come back home. And to me, that's like, yes. Mm -hmm. And so we do have a couple fish on, on the string a little bit. So I wouldn't want to lead, lead us down a, you know, now we've got the position, now we're going to, you know. But I have to be very, very careful because we have to let the job out and interview and go through the process. We're not guaranteeing anything to anybody. And especially now, we don't have anything to offer anyway because we, we don't even have a position. But, but yes, that's a good question. And we do have a couple of people who have wanted to come back to Lakeview and make this their home and do this, and, uh, do this kind of work. That's good to know. That's, that's exactly my question. Yeah. Yeah. The uniqueness of Lakeview is not the appeal to some. Well, well, a lot of us live here for a lot of different reasons. Mm -hmm. And, you know, I have my kids went to Bend, and I thought I would never see them again. You know, I mean, the river and the, the mountain and the breweries and all the mecca up there. And between the attitude and the traffic, and the, and they're right, they like to go out and they had to drive so far out of get away from people, they're almost back to Lakeview anyway. And then they're starting our kids in school. And we got a pretty good scholarship program, and there's no place like home. And you know, I'm so tickled to have to come back. Yeah. Okay. You can discuss that with what's going. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, anyway, that's. I would just assume not be here when you have that conversation. You guys need to do that. <laughs> this doesn't have to be a meeting by any chance because there's no brush on this. Okay. But if you guys can reach back to me and say that we're favorable towards this or not favorable, and then we can take it to the next level to the commissioners and see what the pulse is there. And then at that time, I'll have some more information to give to you as far as it's going to look like. And, 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 so, Ray, before we move on in your agenda, I just want to bring up these couple points. The, the main thing that we'd be asking is commitment to get in that exit clause, you know, language that, that you're currently on the contract. Uh, and it's a 30 day um, window that I, I'm interested in the contract. So, you know, and then figuring out as, as a council how much you'd be willing to contribute to the missing portion that, that um, you know, that we still need to, to bring in to make this position happen. And, you know, I think that's roughly around 30,000 is the missing portion, but obviously, county needs to bear some of that. And, you know, if you guys you know, would bear some of it, then I think we could get. To yes, on, on making this thing happen, and um, you know, it's just a matter of you know, obviously, if this didn't work out, you can negotiate, you know, definitely, and it'll be a contract and something that we all need to feel happy each year moving forward. And it's, it's right we all know, GIS, especially those that work with it, how important GIS is, and you know, right now, we there's so many projects not getting done that with this position could get done and then we map out all this stuff and, and, and then that history is there and it's, it's in a map that's not going to go away a layer that's that's created that you know, we can all benefit from but you know the gps person is the guy behind the computer like if the town wanted their pirates and uh, shots 
that's something that we can do. That the person, the GIS person, is in the office, and they don't go out in the field. They do. They do the computer stuff. Yeah. So yeah, they're not a they're not a surveyor, so don't think of them as a surveyor. Okay. However, a GIS mapping person could take a little bit of burden off of the surveyor. In other words, instead of having to go to them for some resources, you could go to the mapping person. You get user service. Okay. Why don't we set up another work session on this? Okay. And Scott, we'll let you know when it will be. Sure. We can talk more about Here at your pleasure. <laughs> <laughs> and you always love to go with me. Yeah. <laughs> After working a 72 hour shift, yeah, that's right. Thank you very much, you guys. I really appreciate yeah. it. Yeah. Okay. Well, thanks for listening to us out. Thank you. Thanks, guys. Hey, the next one is Business Oregon, $400,000 loan for 911. Michelle? Um, we're here so Scott and Dennis can show you what they need. Oh, oh, I didn't bring my packet. Did you have your? No, did we have. I told you to bring it. <laughs> no. So you just said there was going to be a meeting. You said there's going to be a meeting. What's that? The packet or all the equipment out the I'll run back over to get mine from my. Mine's in my basket. There are work. Okay, we're at the way. town hall. I can go over there. Oh, I don't know. I got it. I got it. No, 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 wait. He, he, well, really, maybe you can really, do a show and tell. Hold on. You can do a show Michelle, and tell. I think Mayor Turner has it. Yeah, I got it. <laughs> <laughs> I think I've got the right one. It's like it's it's like the, the one with the pictures. Yeah, it should be like yeah, 20 pages. So yeah. why don't I take two at a time okay. and go yeah. through the comm center and yeah. take a look at that? I'll be back. So, um, what what Dennis and Scott will do is, like I said, we'll split you up and Dennis will show half of you what he's going through. Oh, 6132, sorry. I thought you were for him. Well, how many people are going to be in here? Um, that's a lot. <laughs> or is it 4421? Or is it. <laughs> anyway, Scott will take the key and dispatch area and see you. Okay. And then it's Dennis taking two. Dennis will take two of them and I'll do yeah, so which group do I follow? Thanks, Armin. Wherever you want to go, buddy. Are you going to bring well, your camera? I think there's only two of us, so it's not even. I have to follow the one technically that's public meeting. They got the teams right next door, right? There's only yeah. going to be two of us. <laughs> Wait, there's five total, so <laughs> three. Oh, dang it. We got Taser. The what? Taser. 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 I think James would like to volunteer, yeah. Yeah. He's more politically correct. He said, she said, that is true. Well, the second day. Am I correct? Yes. I'll put that on. It's already on. We'll need C. Are those the swabbies? Oh, yeah. Correct. Okay. Oh, we're still in the ship, Dave. And we'll, I'll put. Uh, I thought that was the example. You got enough of them. You got enough of them. You did what? Oh, you did what? Oh, anything else that you would like me to include for that? Like, you need more information or you know, just get the application? Oh, I did. I have some. You should have it in your packets. I think they have some the other day. Grand jury. Now, in the next work session, everybody has to do one. Yep, yep. Wow. Work session. You'll have to do an April. We're going to have two work sessions. It's on Friday, April 16th. Yep. That's when we change. So we can. At what time do you? Six, six, and five. Well, I'm not going to do that, right? Okay. I know. I have a mistake. I make mistakes. Oh, 16. You told me to do that. I just listened to you.
that your fish money? You're the one that said you were doing it for 16 well, We didn't have a meeting. <laughs> <laughs> That's true. You guys can hash that out later. Okay, can you think of anything else? Uh, anything that you guys uh, need to add to the... So, so uh, let Michelle know the, the cost of the board on either one. Oh, yeah. yeah. On the, not till April 16th. Okay. Okay. So the next regular time for meeting is March 30th at 4 o'clock. Okay. Okay. Anybody have anything else? Okay, we'll adjourn the meeting at uh, oh, 5.39. Did you need, did you need